people that were mostly individual, spontaneous, and without clear leadership or ideology. But when protracted and taken together, they created a kind of molecular change to urban space, despite the overwhelming power of the state. She continues, by initiating gradual molecular change, the poor in the long run progressively modify the pre-existing composition of forces and hence become the matrix of new changes. So she takes this model um, about how the poor recaptured ordinary life in Tehran um, and seeks to know whether uh, she can describe what happens, describe the informal networks formed at the Kalandia checkpoint between Ramallah and Jerusalem um, that forms the, um, the object of her particular research. And there she writes, there is an ideological framework sustaining individual and collective actions national survival. But what primarily motivates checkpoint workers is necessity, the quest for dignity in the face of the destruction of their regular livelihoods. Thus, through daily tactics of survival, they crept into the spaces of opportunity that existed between the whims and violence of the military and the various needs of the community. Let's remember that the checkpoint workers are also Palestinian here. They could not overthrow the checkpoint, but they could poach it back from being a space of pure brutality and oppression to one in which their own dispossession could be redressed and inequality undone. I know that my original title suggested that I would talk about queer anarchism, and I'm sorry that I found myself drawn down a slightly different path. But let me say that the form of solidarity that I'm trying to point to here is one that has been articulated in queer politics for some time. There is, of course, the impressive movement of queer radicals in Israel, the work of Black Laundry, the contemporary work of Who Profits, the queer anarchists against the wall, the various disruptions and fabulous counter demonstrations to gay pride, the ninth queer eruption festival in its hyper-nationalist versions, and the strong criticism of pinkwashing by which the Israeli government seeks to sell its human rights records on its human rights record on lesbians and gays as a way of deflecting from the military suppression of Palestinian democracy. The feminists at the check, checkpoints, the radical draft resistors, and those who maintain an active memorialization of the hundreds of villages destroyed in 1948, organizations like Zahrot. It seems to me that as important as it is to have what is called an internal critique of the state of Israel, um, um, it is equally important to ask about the political constitution of what counts as internal and what counts as external. Which border establishes that distinction? And how is that border drawn? With what legitimacy? With what violence? What do we make of settlements? Are they inside or outside? And Palestinian Israelis, are they inside or outside or both? We can understand neither forcible uh, dispossession and the right to return for Palestinians, nor the occupation, nor the internal subordination of Palestinian Israelis without understanding how the line between internal and external is drawn again and again, and without protesting the land confiscation that is enacted um, every time that line is drawn. Thus, it makes sense to formulate a queer Israeli politics at the border, as many have done, but also to develop a framework that makes central the important work of queer Palestinians, of Al-Qaz, of Aswat, and of queer Palestinians for boycott, divestments, and, sh and sanctions. They are insisting that one cannot struggle for sexual freedom or alliance without opposing the occupation and without support for BDS, which itself includes support for the right of return and equal rights for Palestinian Israelis. One point of this struggle is to insist that the struggle for gender and sexual freedoms cannot be achieved within the framework of occupation, and that struggles to overcome subordination must be linked. Indeed, they must all oppose the occupation. It's true that self-determination de self becomes an absolute priority under the condition of occupation for Palestinians. But this is no reason wh why one cannot learn about what they are doing and why, and to support that struggle through forms of alliance that support first the rights of Palestinians to determine the course of their mobilization. This is the very instance of the principle of self-determination, which all allies have to affirm. 
that do not idealize away the structural asymmetry between Israeli citizens and Palestinians, either in Israel under occupation um, or um, uh, in spite of indefinite uh, um, uh, insight, insights of indefinite expulsion th through civil society methods that defy the BDS standards. Um, it seems important as well that to contest the national frame fur furnished by the na nation state as the restrictive theater for radical action um, uh, and to refuse to separate anti-state activism from anti-colonial politics. Neither the civil society method nor the demand to work exclusively within the borders of the militarized nation state will furnish the perspectives we need for new and effective forms of solidarity. Luckily, there are many signs that forms of non-state-centered struggle to assert dignity and freedom within ordinary, ordinary life emerge on both sides of the border, at the border, in the dismantling of the border. And in this way, I would like hesitantly to suggest that there are reasons for hope even hope for solidarity.